Yeah. Uh, bears, my God. Well, most of us don't worry about bears. They're probably the last thing we think of running into in the world that we live in. But if you took a long canoe trip in the Canadian Arctic, the background grizzly is going to be in your mind. And when they're not there, they're in your mind. And when they are there, they're really in your mind. And so I often, in the gloaming time of the evening, see a rock that casts a shadow or is in shadow, and it looks like a bear. So I have to keep watching it to see if it moves. If it moves, it's a bear. Most of the time, it's not. It's a rock. But that fear exists inside me. And it's something you have to make your peace with when you're canoeing. Um, we fear fear. And I find that fear is actually an ally. If you're feeling fear, your body's telling you something about what's happening around you. And that's been a big help to me. Along with when I'm setting up camp and I'm cooking or setting the tent up, I always am aware that I have to be aware of what's around. I can't just be so focused on something that I'm not aware, because that bear could appear at any time, in any place. Um, <clears throat> the uh, last summer, I had a visitation, more than once, <laughs> but the visitation I'm thinking of is not one bear, but two bears came to see me on an evening. And it was dark and I was asleep, but I had that bare awareness and I woke up, woke up uh, with an apprehension and I looked out my tent window or screen mosquito net and saw the bear down by my canoe, under which were all my food packs. So I got the bangers out and I got the whistle out and I had, you know, you feel sort of like a weird shaman with all these bear deterrents. And they worked, and this was a young bear, and off he went. And as I was turning to go back towards my tent, I saw the silhouette of a bear on a sand spit crossing the river. And I thought, oh my God, that's not the same bear. It couldn't be, and it wasn't. And I decided I needed to go down and meet this bear. I didn't want her, I thought of her coming up into my camp with me not paying attention. So I went looking for her, which is not what you usually do. And she was a big full grown bear and I think it was a mother and a cub who hadn't separated yet. The cub might have been two years old. And uh, she did not respond to the bangers the way the younger one did. She just like, huh, what's going on? And I had to fire three bangers and one really right at her so it exploded near her head. Then she took off. We were about 40 feet apart. And I made a mistake that night because usually if a bear shows up, you leave. And I didn't. And I thought I had scared him off and I went back to sleep only to be woken up when something big hit the guy line to the tent. And it was the bigger bear coming back to the canoe. And she sat with her left side to the canoe and had her hand reaching out over the side of it. And she made this gesture as though she was about to demonstrate for us a, 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 a side stretch in yoga. <laughs> I don't know what her next move would have been because that's when I fired the first banger and I got her to leave. And, um, and then I left. I just bundled everything, got it in the canoe and set off. And it's a really nice post. I called it Bear and Angel. And I won't go into the evening after, but I had the most incredible evening thanks to the bear.